Katie Dunn, thank you for talking to me this morning. Um, first and foremost, how are you? How is your family doing? Yeah, they're all great. We've been in isolation now for two and a bit weeks. So only going out for food and we're, we're staying very safe. What was your reaction to hearing about the global pandemic, in particular when Boris Johnson announced there was going to be a lockdown as a tennis player? What was your initial thoughts around that? I think I kind of expected it to come just because of what was going on in Italy and Spain. Um, so I'd kind of got myself in the headspace ready for that to happen. Um, I actually went out to get things for my training um, before he made that announcement so that I could do things at home. Um, and obviously it's quite a scary thing. No one really knows what's going to happen in the future. So it kind of is worrying, but I mean, at the moment I'm in the lucky percentage, nothing happens to my family or my close friends. So yeah, just taking it day by day at the moment. Of course, we saw the announcement last week that Wimbledon has been cancelled and it's pretty much had a knock-on effect for the rest of the grass court season. As somebody who's ranked in the world, what was your reaction hearing the news about Wimbledon's not going to be featuring this year or come back in 2021? Yeah, I was pretty gutted. Um, I think a lot of players are. Um, it's probably the best tournament <laughs> of the year. Everyone looks forward to it especially the Brits. Um, I've had a few messages from a couple of fans that have said, like, I'm gutted, I hope you're doing all right, or this kind of thing. But again, in the bigger picture, it's such a small thing compared to everyone's health and safety. So, I mean, they definitely made the right decision in, in cancelling it. And your thoughts on the, the wider grass court season as well? Because I didn't really appreciate it until the... The announcements came up from the LTA that we, you know, Eastbourne has gone now, Nottingham, and, as well as other grass court tournaments. It's literally wiped out the whole of the grass court season. So, for you as a grass court player and hard court and clay court, how has that impacted your training so far? Well, obviously, at the moment we can't play tennis <laughs> because of the uh, lockdown. So, in that respect, it it hasn't really affected it because we couldn't have done that anyway um fitness i'm still doing the same things that i would have been doing anyway um but yeah it's just trying to keep getting the motivation each day to get better because obviously when you think wow i'm not actually going to be playing a match for minimum three months you kind of really have to keep reminding yourself what you want to improve on where you're like goals are for this period of time and obviously they're all based around um, my fitness. Talk to us about your fitness actually, you talk about obviously there's no grass court season, there hasn't been any clay so far, the French Open will come on to in a bit. How are you managing your training as a tennis player? So um, I kind of said it before, before the lockdown happened, I saw an Instagram on Belinda Bencic's, Bencic's Instagram she had got some tires and created her own like squat rack. So oh, had a bar. Yeah. And I was like, that's a really good idea. So I went out to a local garage and asked if they had any old tires. Um, and they gave me eight. So I've got four tires on each side, got my bar kind of created that squat rack can do. I've got weights that go up to 45 kilos, which isn't, it won't be heavy enough once, you know, I want to build up. Normally I do about 70 kilos, so it's not quite heavy enough, but it's something and it's keeping me doing those types of sessions. Um, I can use the bar for like chin ups underneath it, more girly ones than the guys just getting on the tree trunk or something. Um, also my brother used to be a pro cyclist. So we have turbos where you put in your bike and you can just cycle in your living room so that's another session that I've been doing quite a lot and how often are you training are you training every day or is it three or four times a week um I'm going Monday to Saturday three fitness sessions a day um <laughs> I also have a wall so I am kind of keeping my eye in with like the ball and hitting against it doing some fast volleys 
but yeah I'm still like t by Saturday night I'm still bailing on my friends um honestly tired and I went to bed at 8 30 <laughs> on Saturday because I was so exhausted but yeah yeah, I saw on social media that you posted that Saturday you completely bailed out because you were so tired. I guess I didn't appreciate how much effort it would take for you to keep your, your training going. And I love the idea about getting the tires as well. I think that's a fantastic way to keep fit. I guess the only concern is though is about match fitness. How long do you think it would take you to get up to match fitness? I think it's, tr it's tricky to say because I've never been in this situation. Um, I know just going back from the injury that I had, which... I was out of tournaments for nine months. It took me like three tournaments to kind of get back in the swing of things, more mentally to remember the pressures of what a match is like and how to respond in certain situations. So fitness-wise, like heart and legs, I think I'll be okay. It's more when you go back, how long is it going to take for your mind to get used to it and you know i i think i've learned that i need to drop my expectations from um previously doing it with my injury so. and are you in touch with your coaches and also your tennis friends on a regular basis yeah um i did a actually a zoom um session with my fitness coach he took me through my yoga um so we did that the other night uh, my tennis coach i'm talking to daily just to keep the contact going, keep doing some mental sessions. So he sent me over some things today to think about. Um, and then, yeah, in the evenings, um, I'm speaking to all my friends as much as possible, really. Speaking of matches, of course, 2018 playing Yelena Ostapenko, former world uh, Grand Slam champion in round one, narrowly losing that opening match for your, your Wimbledon. You've talked a lot about the mental side of the game, how much did that come into play playing a former Grand Slam champion for you? Yeah, it was massive. Um, because when I first found out I was going on centre court, it was actually 45 minutes before I went on. Only 45 minutes? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was scary. <laughs> so like it was a it was a court to be announced and which usually means that you're gonna play on a bigger court, you know, centre one, two, eighteen. I didn't really think centre was going to happen and when they told me I kind of froze I was like oh my god like kind of tears in my eyes like wow and I was freaking out a little bit went to my coach you know going through all the fears that you would have for going out on centre against such a, a good player it was mostly you know I don't want to embarrass myself I don't want all these people to be watching me and I don't get a game, all of this kind of stuff, which is totally normal. And my coach just kind of let me run through them for five, 10 minutes and have a little panic. And then he was like, right, okay, stop. Like, why, why are you playing tennis? Why are you here right now? Like, what do you actually want from your career? And I was like, well, to play on centre court for these kind of moments. And for myself, it, like this is what I've always wanted to do since I was like four or five. That's been a dream. So why am I allowing what other people might think of me when I'm on the court to change the way that I'm gonna enjoy that match? So I really did like a switch and and the only reason why I could do that is because of the work that I'd put in to psychology in the last few years. Um, so when I walked out, it was completely just about me and enjoying it for myself. And I absolutely loved it. Um, and I really believed that I could win the match. Um, so yeah, it was such a good experience. You talked about your coach giving you some tips and some ideas about how to approach the match and we now know um you know when the tour restarts on the wta tour that coaches will be allowed to come onto the court and and speak to the players i'm keen to get your thoughts on that what's your thinking around that is that something that you want to do i kind of disagree with it just because i think it takes away some people's strengths like there's some players out there that are really smart tactically and they're very aware with how their opponents are playing and how, what kind of level they're putting on the court and they can change their game 
to like change the way that the match is going. And I think if someone's coach is coming on court and they're telling them that, it takes those types of strengths away from the girls that can do it really well. Um, also, like the mental side of things, sometimes you win a match because your opponent has broken mentally. And that doesn't necessarily mean like she's smashing rackets and is really angry. It just means she might have some nerves and isn't quite going for her shots, doesn't trust herself, or is overpressing and trying to go for too much. I think if their coach is coming on court just to keep their, their nerves down and keep them calm, that again can change the result of the match. So I just, I think it takes away a little bit what tennis is right now. It's an interesting debate, isn't it? Because on the one hand, you have, as you rightly say, some players who feel they need that little bit of a pep talk, if you like. And then there are other players who say, no, don't need the coach. I can figure this out for myself. And what I love about tennis personally is that thing of two players on the court figuring out each other's play and having a strategy and trying to win a match without help from anybody else. It's very much like a game of chess for me. Yeah. And, that's what, and that's what I love about tennis. So I've got very mixed views about on-court coaching. I can see the pros of it, but there's a lot of cons to it as well. Yeah. And I do wonder if it's something that's going to become um, part of the game, or is this just going to be a test to see if the WTA, if the WTA are going to move forward with it? Yeah, I hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's, take a, let's talk about the women's game itself. There's been a lot more focus on it over the last few years or so. How welcome is that for you as a tennis player? Um, like the views in, in what you mean with in watching the matches as in, in terms of social media now giving it more of a, a higher profile because you know five ten years ago the WTA tour the women's tour was very much behind the men yeah, but do you feel now that they're they're probably yeah, on the I think so. yeah I think it's a lot better and um, I feel like people appreciate women's tennis more and how much work we also put into our games. Um, I think as well with the fact that we don't really have an outstanding number one, apart from kind of Serena, you always, is always the favorite, but it's more, you can't pick who's gonna win a slam. Whereas in the men's, I feel like you can kind of see who's gonna be in the finals or in the semis. And it, I think it makes it more exciting. And I think fans might appreciate that more maybe that they just don't really know what's gonna happen. Absolutely, so given that point, let's put together your perfect player and you can include yourself in this, of course. Um, who for I you? I myself every time. <laughs> just use yourself entirely, why not, why not? In terms of um, the, per I don't wanna say the perfect women's player, cause that's not exactly true, but a hybrid of a, of a female player. From the yeah. current tour, who would you choose for your serve from the women's tour? I think Carolina Pliskova. Interesting. I was thinking of Carolina Pliskova as well. She has got a beautiful... Yes, it's it's a lot of pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I would love some of those. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you choose Carolina Pliskova for the, the serve? Honestly, I'm just going by the aces that she does. <laughs> she gets a lot of more free points than other players would out of it so yeah I think it's for me it's a toss-up between her and Serena Williams but I think yeah. Christopher just edges it because some of the angles that she gets with her serves is absolutely yeah. outstanding okay Christopher for the serve how about um forehand I'm going Kvitova ah interesting because she's a lefty yeah yeah I think so yeah and she just gets the power doesn't she she's strong yeah so. yeah good choice good choice um backhand i must say i struggled with this one what's your thoughts i'm going ostapenko interesting I, why yeah, ostapenko well i played her for one so i felt it <laughs> <laughs> also from juniors she's always had an unbelievable backhand so like whenever you play her in juniors it was like just try not to hit it to the backhand because a winner is gonna come off it so i'm gonna stick with her for that Oh, fantastic. Okay. And a player at the net? Barbara Krejcikova. Interesting. Why her? 
Um, her hands are unbelievable. And I mean, I've grown up with her since I was 12. We um, would play her in team matches, so like GB versus Czech. And we'd always play them for third place. So it was always that playoff. And they always beat us in the doubles because she was just too good. <laughs> <laughs> she would just, we'd be one all in singles. And we'd, like, every time the coach would be like, come on, you can do it this time, you can do it. Never, it never happened. <laughs> so let's focus on you and your goals uh, for 2020 and 2021 now with the tennis season as it is. You have six ITF titles under your belt. You have talked about being injured over the last few months or so. How is your injury and what's your plans when the season resumes? Yeah, the injury is pretty much all better now. Um, I got back out there before this happened with coronavirus and I played five tournaments. Um, so the first three were a bit shaky, um, but the last two, like I felt back to where I kind of was mentally and I was pretty strong. So um, it's like a nice place to stop in a way because I, I remember that I can do it again. I can get back to where I was. Um, I think it's tricky to say like, what the goals are this year um, just because we don't know when we're going to start playing again. Uh, but personally, I never really have outcome goals anymore. I found that they were very unhelpful for me um, just because I got fixated on them too much and I would be looking at wins and points and I would never be concentrating on how to do that. So my goals now are very much on the process and what I can control. Um, so in matches, that, that for me means how well I commit to my game plan, how well I do my routines and how I respond to situations. So that's how I judge myself. And finally, Katie, is there any message that you'd like to give to your fans and the wider tennis community? Yeah, I think just keep staying um, safe, try and be fit and healthy, mind and body. <laughs> um, if you're missing tennis, create some like fun games in the living room, go over the sofa, do some volley games. Um, and just I'm really looking forward to being back out there competing and hopefully soon everyone will be able to see some of my done speciality faces. <laughs> I like that. I like that as a working title, done speciality. Like yeah, speaking. I have a few. My, my face can be very comical, I think. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Katie, thank you for your time. Of course, stay healthy and do look after yourself and look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you.